Today in the news, we got some zen leaks and some smoothing motion. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your smooth sequence. I mean boot sequence. This week is filled to the brim with AMD stuff. The Bits and Chips Twitter account said that the move from Zen Plus to the Zen 2 cores would deliver an average of 13% in IPC gains. First, let's clear up the sources. Bits and Chips says that the information is from an employee of a big company which verified previous leaks like the IPC of the original Zen architecture. I would still take this with a grain of salt though. It's a leak after all. So this IPC gain is apparently in scientific tasks only no gaming data at the moment. Considering that the IPC gain from Zen to Zen Plus was around 2-5%, this 13% improvement over Zen Plus would make sense since Zen 2 was touted as being a leap forward and not a step forward like Zen Plus. We had some leaks about a month ago showing the new 7 nanometer Epic CPUs having a huge performance advantage compared to the first generation. I believe the difference in performance per core was something like 50% although my calculations were extremely rough estimates. Since this is only the IPC gains compared to the first generation of Zen Core or Zen Plus, I suspect clock speeds will also play a large part in making the Zen 2 core a hit. Couple that with a likely higher core count and sprinkle in some AMD pricing and I believe AMD could once again blow our minds. Just to reiterate, the 13% average IPC gain over Zen Plus is strictly in scientific tasks. That means that individual instructions on a CPU will give us better better or worse IPC gains. That's why Bits and Chips specified it had no gaming data at the moment. I have no doubt in my mind that Zen 2 is going to be a pretty awesome line of CPUs, but I really hope to get some higher core counts on this third generation. What about you? What do you hope for on Zen 2? More cores or higher clocks? I know that both are probably going to come, but what do you prioritize? Let me know down below. All right, so it's getting colder outside and I wanted to do this before it started snowing. So next week, I'll go ahead and wash the PC that I told you guys was flooded. Let me know if you want a video to see if it survived the flood. We can do like a PC rescue segment or an entire video dedicated to it. Click on the poll up here to register your vote and I'll do it if we can get, um, let's say 300 votes for yes. Moving on, Apple is starting to tease their October 30th event. We've talked about rumors on the iPad, but this event could also unveil a new MacBook Air. It might not have that same name though. The MacBook Air was first introduced in 2008 and was this uh, thin and light that fits in an envelope. Remember the ad? Through this strange world, hoping I could learn a bit about how since then, the new MacBook came and became thinner and lighter than the Air, so a successor might not carry the same nomenclature. Some specs on the display have been floating around, but we all know that this uh, 1440 by 900 display is getting super tired. A refresh on the Mac Mini is also expected since that device hasn't been updated since 2014. An Intel Core U series processor has been rumored and that could shrink the size of the device. The only advice I have is that if you want a Mac or an iPad right now, wait. Even Mac Rumors gives the don't buy recommendation to most of the Apple products. Then we have Valve with a new feature on their Steam VR app. The feature called Motion Smoothing will allow more players on more PCs to play high fidelity VR games, according to Valve. It's a simple feature. It takes a frame and interpolates another one right after. Simple, yes, but latency was the biggest issue, which Valve says that they have a handle on. This technology is similar to what you have on TVs that advertise like 120, 240, or 420 hertz smooth motion, or clear motion. If you've ever played on a TV that has this feature turned on, but you didn't turn it off, you might have noticed incredible input lag. Well, that's what Valve claims to have fixed. Valve says that they are able to interpolate up to three frames for every real frame at 90 hertz. I wonder what it would look like at a three to one ratio. At least the feature is only on when needed to prevent stuck frames, which is the one thing that makes me sick whenever I play VR. In gaming, and this is a little more of a comparison just for fun, Fortnite is still making some crazy stuff happen on their maps, keeping it super entertaining. From adding new weaponry every few weeks to balancing them, or map changes like the uh, cube that was rolling around a few weeks ago, and uh, the same cube falling into a lake, and then a floating island emerging with the cube at the bottom, whatever, Fortnite knows how to keep you entertained, 
if you like that type of game. On the other end, PUBG just added a new weapon, the Scorpion, and they tweaked the blue zone to make it a little bit easier to see through. Here's the before and after. Interesting stuff, right? Well, maybe I'm biased towards Fortnite. Actually, I am very biased towards Fortnite, but PUBG really seems to become more and more stale. Sure, they give us three maps and a fourth one is coming out, but I think adding stories, lore, and ARGs like they do in Fortnite is definitely more interesting in my opinion. My opinion, okay guys? What do you think though? If you're a PUBG player, would you like to see things like this happen or are you happy with a simple map rotation or additional maps? Let me know down below. And this is pretty much it for the video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. You can click right here to see the latest video and right below to subscribe. You can also stay frosty and I hope you enjoy the ride. Yes, I made it rhyme on purpose, even if it didn't really make sense.